Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the food experience. Today's experience, a little bit of a checkup and cleaning ideas for your Vivor 22 inch flat top griddle. And first what I'm going to do is gunk it up, get it all nice and messy and show you how easy it is to clean. In fact, I already shot that video and certain things I thought were going to stick didn't even stick at all. And you will see how that is. After that, I'm starting off with a completely cool flat top and I will tell you the time it takes to get to certain temperatures and I think it took up to about 17 minutes and some odd seconds and it reached what I set it to which I think was 210 Celsius. Anyhow without further ado let's go ahead and get it going. My goal here is to get the flat top nice and dirty with stuff that's caked on gummed on from some sweet type of Japanese barbecue sauce. In fact, I'll be using Bashan's Japanese barbecue sauce. I marinated a chicken breast for an hour. The griddle's nice and up to temperature, just barely over 400 degrees. Putting down a little bit of peanut oil. Oil's nice and hot. I could tell it's shimmering. Normally when I marinate things and put them on the griddle, I pat them dry first, but I'm not going to do that in this case. Let's go right on. That is a butterfly chicken breast. I'll even put a little more sauce on top. I love this sauce. It is a great sauce, folks. I could definitely tell this sauce is starting to burn a little bit. It's not sticking yet though, but it definitely left a lot of crud behind. It's been cooking around five minutes. Time to flip it over. Oh man, it definitely was burning on there. I could tell folks. And the grill temperature, just to let you know, is still right around 414 in the center. So it's still holding the temperature fairly well. But hopefully you can see all this crud that is on the griddle now. I mean, I can scrape and it'll come off sort of, kind of. But you know it's going to be leaving residue behind. The last thing I'm going to try to burn on is some American cheese. Let's just slap it right on there. No oil, nothing. Oh yeah, it's starting to bubble. Definitely all melted, I could tell. Oh yeah, it's eventually going to burn on there. There you go, it's boiling. I'll tell you, all this extra burnt stuff does not smell too great, folks. Don't try this at home. All right, let's see what kind of mess it made. Oh, really? Check that out. No mess. You see that? That is how well seasoned I got this thing. Uh, it's starting to over here. But, um, yeah, I'll let it crust on. I'm going to try to let it crust on. But initially, that did not stick at all. And you can tell this stuff is totally char city all caked on. There's like no way I could scrape it off right now. I mean, it's not going to come off. All right, let's check that cheese now. No, it really doesn't stick, folks. <laughs> it just doesn't stick. You really need something with a lot of sugar to stick, and that's why I wanted to go with this Japanese barbecue sauce by Bashan's. Now, one thing you could do at this point, you could try, not sure how well it's going to work, but is if I put down a little bit of oil, Kind of work that in a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely coming off. And that's probably the best, easiest way on the griddle is to just scrape it off after some oil. But what you could also do if it's really caked on is put down some water and baking soda. I would let the griddle cool down a little bit to maybe a little bit over 300 degrees before trying that. But this stuff, with the oil is releasing just fine. See that? Look at that. A little bit of oil. And in case anyone wants to know, not that it really matters too much, I'm using peanut oil. Any high temperature oil 
will work, okay? Don't use olive oil. That will leave a taste on there. Not only that, olive oil doesn't handle these higher temperatures too well. It breaks down. Normally, I would kind of clean as I go, but I wanted to show you what it would be like for stuff that's really burnt and caked on there. And you can see it right there. I got it all in a pile. See all that? There we go. Not sticky feeling anymore. And I'll let this cool down just a bit so it's not so blazing hot. And then I'll give it a little wash with water and a towel. Putting on some water. That'll give a good steam cleaning. Another dousing of water. And a towel. Give it a once over. You can see how this towel is. Yeah, pretty darn clean. Now I noticed there's some stuff caked on the side right here. Give it a little water. And that should mostly rub off too. This side's definitely pretty warm. Whatever doesn't come up, you could take like a bamboo bristle brush. There we go, took that right off. And that's really about it, folks. The griddle is heated up. It's about 347 in some places, 302 at others. It's definitely ready to start cleaning. Now, it's still dry. This stuff is not going to come off easily. I mean, it did come off a little, but not much. If I apply some oil, spread that out a little bit because the oil will just make it scrape right off as I showed you in my last example. See if I could do that here. Yeah, it's definitely more caked on in this one. Yeah, so it kind of comes off. It's still really hard to get off and I could eventually do it. It's just gonna take many, many rounds. Another way is you could try squirting water on it and it might help steam clean it. I would first remove all the excess oil though, since water and oil don't exactly play well together. Here's what happens if I try with water. Yeah, that took the rest of that off nice and quick. And I do have the flat top really low. Like I said, it's about 300 degrees. That's why the water just doesn't immediately evaporate. Yeah, that came right off there. But I'll tell you, it sure is a lot easier to keep this clean while you're cooking rather than to turn it off and let it get cold and gunked up with all the debris. And we'll get to this trough in a minute. Applying some fresh oil. And definitely get rid of any excess.
And that last coat of oil should help keep the seasoning good. And it's still a little bit dirty. A little more oil. Clean part. Yeah, it's definitely pretty clean now. It'll never be 100% clean unless you really keep going at it, but you don't really need that for cast iron anyways. But it's definitely nice and clean now. Got a very thin layer of oil on it. That'll definitely keep it protected and that's what I'm looking at after that recent wiping. Now for the grease trough. It's about 130 degrees. It's not really going to steam up like the griddle would, but you could try putting some water down. And then that should come off fairly easily. And it was definitely well gunked on over here. Definitely a very durable griddle, I will say. When I was a kid, I had a fast food job or two, and this really gives you that commercial grade feeling, you know? Definitely coming nice and clean right here. Yeah, that should just about do it, folks. I think she's all clean for the most part. All I have to do is the side rails right here. I'll do that off camera. I already showed you that in the last video. And um, yeah, let's move on to showing you what time it takes to get to certain temperatures. Someone left a comment on one of my videos requesting the time it takes to get to certain temperatures. So let's go over that. Turning the temperature just a little more than 200 C which is going to be a bit over 400 degrees. Starting the timer. And see you guys back up top. Right now it's been on two minutes and the temperature in the middle is just over 100 degrees. I also want to note when I first started up, it was 76 degrees right in the middle of the flat top surface. Three minutes in and right in the middle it's 133. Just after four minutes and right in the center it's about 170. It's about 218. At six minutes it's about 245 in the center. When you go to the extreme left and right though it does drop off. Like at the extreme left it's 176 and on the right it is 138. And it's actually good that way because that way you could have zones even though there are no controllable zones, but you could have areas that aren't quite as intense of heat. And I like using them for uh, onions and garlic, things like that, that you don't want to rush and do on a super high heat. And then I could use the middle area for meats or anything else that I want to cook at a higher heat. It's about 281, 284. The hot spot in the center is around 308. The hot spot in the center is about 340, 344. Right in the middle, it's about 370, 372, about 390. It's about 415, about 430, 435. I notice there's starting to get some rolling smoke. That's good. 
Now you know it's actually hot enough a time where you can put down a smash burger and it's going to cook proper. And right now, it's almost 14 minutes and we're at about 450. 452, 456, 15 minutes in, and it's about 462. It's about 475, 489 I even got. It's definitely way up there, and I got this nice rolling smoke. I'm not sure if it's going to be visible in the camera with my current settings. Oh, now I'm at 483, 486, nice and hot. And as I mentioned, I have the dial on the front turn to the first mark after 200. So what is that, like 210? And I think 210 Celsius. Probably, uh, we're already past that point. So whatever you set it to, it's going to run a little bit hotter than what you actually set it to. But now we are at 17 minutes. And I'm at 490, 496 even. Okay, the preheat just stopped. It's at 17 minutes and 52 seconds when it stopped. And that's for, I think, 210 Celsius. And to let you know, right in that hot spot, it's 505 degrees, 496, 460. It's going to take a while for it to get the hottest temperature if I turned it up again. But um, I know it goes well over 500 from when I first tested it. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I wanted to achieve two different things in this video. First, I wanted to get it nice and dirty and show you how easy it is to get clean again. Maybe I'll come back another time and do another gunked up, messed up video and then let it cool down all the way and everything's really stuck and then heat it back up and clean it. I could show you how to do that next time. But for now, I thought that would suffice, you know. As long as you kind of clean as you go, it's really the best way to be cooking when you're on a flat top. But even if you wait till the very end, as you saw, it was pretty easy to recover and get it back to nice and clean. Regarding the second part of the video, you saw the time it took to get to certain temperatures. I went all the way up to like 17 minutes before it reached 210 Celsius, which is like way over 400 Fahrenheit. So, okay Google, convert 210 Celsius to Fahrenheit. 210 degrees Celsius is equal to 410 degrees Fahrenheit. So it says 410, but at that setting, I was reaching like 500 degrees. But that's actually a good thing. That means that this flat top gets screaming hot, hotter than you even need to really be cooking at. So really, that's about all I wanted to show you in this video. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the Vivor 22-inch flat top griddle, leave me a line below. I love hearing from you guys, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And until next time, have a stellar day. Be excellent. And most of all, remember me, I'm KJ Andio, your food experience host with the most. Y'all take care, and I'll see you next time.